Okay, okay, Shalom, Shalom. It's your brother Wab Rum. You're back with another lesson, Lord willing. <coughs> It'd be edifying. I want to start by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Waha Rakakwadash, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shah. Double honors to the apostles and elders and bishops of Great Millstone who taught me this truth. And Shalom to the 144,000 men of the Lord you see on the highways and byways prophesying in the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh also in the correct doctrine of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. I also want to send a shalom to the one-third men, women, and children that will escape the judges of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh by their faith. Just got another lesson I want to bring out through the Spirit of the Lord, man, because uh, this truth is not going to be on the highways and byways for much longer, on, this in, on the internet for much longer, because they have an agenda that want to tear down <laughs> the internet, man, because there's so much information is being spread worldwide at an instant, and they want to take that down, man. So they use they're gonna use the excuse of um, the democ uh, their democracy misinformation. You know, I mean, you know all the things that they use pretty much now, and they're gonna take the, the the word off the internet, man, because they know that their time is running out, man. So let's hit this video, hit some scriptures, and I got a couple videos, but hit this video and a couple of uh, scriptures, and Lord willing to be edifying. We will hold social media platforms accountable for the hate infiltrating their platforms because they have a responsibility to help fight against this threat to our democracy. And if you profit off of hate, if you act as a megaphone for misinformation or cyber warfare, if you don't police your platforms, we are going to hold you accountable. I think we need to push back on this. There, there's no guarantee to free speech on misinformation or, or hate speech, and especially around our democracy. But I also think there are Americans who are uh, engaged in uh, this kind of propaganda. Uh, and whether they should be civilly or even in some cases criminally charged uh, is something that would be a better deterrent. So they want to lock you up, man, for telling the truth. So the truth is going to be a, um, a criminal offense. Speaking the truth is going to be a criminal offense. And knowing the truth, man, the Wadi Yahweh should be outside for blessing us to know this truth. So you're gonna see that they, they wanna they want to they don't want the truth to go out anymore. And they want they want the people to be dumbed down for them not to see what their agenda is and what they're doing behind the scenes. But the spirit of the Lord is on the men of the Lord and the women of the Lord to understand what times we're in. Because our our, our brethren, the, the, the angels and Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah are soon to be here and to wreak havoc on the earth, man. So I had a couple of videos Showing you, showing you that the, the, the angels are appearing, man, and they know that their time is running short. This is in New Orleans. This was nine ten, man, just this month. <laughs> see that video there was a photoshop there was a real deal cherry there in that cloud man you can see it you, you can see it plain as day and it was very very close it was it was in the atmosphere man but check this out if you ever seen the movie don't look up this is like don't look up and especially with my imagination and the things that are going on with the, the second moon that we're getting bro check this out james webb telescope found an object that is he heading towards earth and this object just course corrected itself to head directly towards Earth, right? And this is in the time that we have a second moon that's going to be here on September 29th. But they don't know exactly 
where this object is coming from, but it's the size of a, sm of a small city. Bro, you can look it up in the search insights. I'm going to show it to you guys. Anyways, this thing, they're saying that the same people that found this thing are looking beyond this thing, and they think they found life on a planet. So this thing is coming from a life, from a place that has life. Bro, I can't even. So it's coming towards our, I can't even. <laughs> this is here from the Search Insights on TikTok. The James Webb Space Telescope has made a significant discovery, reportedly detecting a massive object described as being the size of a city traveling towards Earth. This find prompted a secret emergency briefings with key congressional leaders. While the exact time frame for its arrival remains unknown, the urgency of the situation has led to a closed doors discussions on how to handle potential implications of this discovery. The details of the object and the next steps is addressing this situation remains classified, sparking widespread speculation on the nature of the incoming object. To this, there have been rumors and discussions suggesting that the object spotted by the James West Space Telescope is not natural, further fueling speculation and concern about what it could be in its potential impact on Earth. Read further, you can see the search insight. So this is how my imagination works, right? <laughs> this is how my imagination works, and this is for entertainment purposes only, right? So there, so they have seemed to found a planet that has life on them. From this planet, there's an object the size of a city that's headed towards Earth that course corrected itself to head towards Earth, right? At the same time, in about four days, we're going to have a second moon orbiting our planet for 57 days, which is two moon phases, two full moon phases plus a day. Then this object is gonna leave and come back in a couple years. Meanwhile, we have this object the size of a city headed towards Earth. I believe that those objects may be connected. Why not? Those objects can be connected. That's like a little Voyager they sent out, you know? You know, like, that's like a little drone that they sent out to, to survey the area or whatever. This is just speculation, allegations. Listen, man, space talk and me, I'm already very speculative about space talk. So to me, they are telling us something. When this, something's going to happen within this next few weeks. You know what I'm saying? That's what I believe. Something's coming, something's going to happen, and I don't believe they're telling us the truth about everything, but they're telling us some things. I'm grounding. I'll catch you guys next time. See you later, alligators. It's some bullshit out here. Yeah. They are definitely, uh, Doing something, they're trying to cover it up. But we see, man, we, we can see through through Esau's tricks and his devices, man. Now we see, and now we see that it's a new moon coming. And I seen, like I said yesterday, I brought out where they they say that's Jacob's, uh, the Jacob's moon. It, but see, Esau thinks he is in control of the 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 the, the, um, the heavens, man. And we know through the spirit power of Yahweh by Shem Yahshua, those are the chariots that are written about in the scriptures, man. Those are the chariots of the Most High Power. And he said he's seen a chariot. They, they, they are seeing a, a chariot as big as a city, man. Let me get this real quick, man, just to start off with. They seen a chariot as big as a city. So the Lord is, 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 is doing major things behind the scenes as well as this World War Three picks up, man. So our redemption is closer than we ever can expect, man. This is uh, Zechariah 5 and verse 1. It says, Then I turned and lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a flying robe, describing a chariot. He says, And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying robe. The length thereof is 30, it's like it's 20 cubits, and the breadth thereof is 10 cubits. Then said he unto me, this is the curse. See that? Those chariots are cursed, man. This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. Those chariots are going to be a curse to Esau, man. This is what the angel was speaking to uh, uh, Zechariah and telling him, man, this is the curse, man. Then said he unto me, this is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. For everyone that stilleth 
shall be cut off as on this side according to it, and every one that sweareth shall be cut off as on that that side according to it. So the Lord telling you, they're coming back to bring judgment. You're going to be cut off, man. And this is talking about Esau and the heathen nations because they're going to fight against the angels. That's that war in heaven, man. He says, and I will bring it forth, saith Yahweh by Shem Yahweh of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief. Well, who is the house of the thief? Where is the house of the thief at, man? That's Babylon the Great, man. And these other nations too, like Great Britain, they, 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 they stole us as well, man. But it's mostly talking about Babylon the Great, man, because it's the great judgment that's coming here, man. It's coming here. He says, and I will... It's like it. I will bring it forth, saith Yahweh by Shem Yahweh of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief, and into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name. And it shall remain in the midst of the house, and shall consume it. See that the chariots are going to consume a, a, a lot of these um, armies, man. Their weaponry, people, man. So they're going to enter into the house of the thief, and going to, it's going to consume it, man. With the timber thereof and the stones thereof. So a lot of judgment is going to be given by these chariots, man. A lot of judgment is going to be given by these chariots. Let's get back to these videos. So it's not even September 29th yet and people are seeing two moons in the sky already. So what is this about, y'all? I thought September 29th is when we were going to start seeing two moons. Why are we seeing two moons in the atmosphere already? Now, I be telling y'all, Florida got all the signs. Florida got all the action. This is why the wood that was used to build the ark, gopher wood, is only found in Florida. So are the end times only happening in Florida? Because, man, Florida's going through it, y'all. But this is not the first time we're seeing a couple of moons in the sky throughout the years of me posting. I've been showing y'all that people are seeing multiple moons in the sky. So why is it now that the government or NASA come out talking about it? Because people are noticing what is going on and they have no explanation for what's happening. The only thing they did was basically tell us that we're having two moons in the sky and that's practically it. They gave no explanation of how, why, who, all these type of things. Everything that we have been taught is a lie. Hell, majority of the things that we learn in school, we don't even use to this very day, y'all. They just taught us a whole bunch of useless lies. And now our lives and everything that we have known is literally being shifted. That's why we're on here asking each other what is going on because the media is not telling us truth. They're not doing justice. But hang on to your seats, y'all. There's going to be a lot more that hits the fan, y'all. We have more truths that are coming to the surface. This is the age of Aquarius where truth will reign. This is strictly for entertainment purposes only. I'm only raising awareness to interesting situations during these interesting times. Thank you for tuning to my frequency. Let's get this shift. Peace in. Yeah, I don't know why Jake just don't repent, man. The age of Aquarius. Oh, that, this shit don't even mean anything, man. Let's, let's keep on with this madness. Let me get back to the scriptures. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to play this right here. Um, but it just frustrates you when these people come up with this, all this madness. That shit don't even mean in the age of Aquarius and... Changing your frequency and all that shit is madness, man. We have a power. We have the energy of the most high, man. The creator of all that madness he's speaking about. It's just dumb, man. But check this video out, man. And these are the chariots they call. As you see, it says leaked footage. NASA cuts live feed. Multiple UFOs uh, come in inches of uh, the ISS. Two ships went by. You could hear a little bit of a disturbance. With that in mind, watch this. Okay, see how that happened? Boom, right away the first one comes in. It, it's all broken up digital signal. Here you go. There's the first one. Watch, here you go. Boom, it's breaking up everything. Then the second one goes by. Come on, everybody. This is very slow. Look at that. Take a second. Look at that ship. Folks, that is a starship. That is a Sepoian ship. They love the circular thing.
So there you go, man. That's the curse, man. That's Esau's curse is coming to him. Those chariots, man. One more time. This is uh, Zechariah 3 and verse well, 5 and verse 3. It says, Then say he unto me, This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. And every one that still of shall be cut off as on this side and according to it. And every one on that, it's like and every one that swerves shall be cut off as on that side according to it. See that? The judgment is going to be given by these chariots, man. They're coming to bring judgment on the earth. Let's get this real quick. This is Proverbs 3. This is Proverbs 3, and I'm going to drop down to verse 33. And it says, too far. The curse of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh is in the house of the wicked. See that? The curse, these chariots are coming to Babylon the great, man. Esau's house, the house of the wicked. But he blesseth the inhabitants of the just. See, the elect are going to make it out of the judgments of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh And also those judgments are going to be given by those chariots, man. So it's coming to the, it's, 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 this curse is coming to the house of the wicked, man. And that's why we continue to warn our people to repent to the Lord, man. Because Esau's going to get the judgment that he 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 desperately needs, man. We trying to get our people out of harm's way, man, before the judgment comes. This is Exodus 21 and verse 16. It says, And he that stilleth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand. See that? Where are the Israelites at, man? We're going to be found in Esau's hands, man. He shall surely be put to death. See that? Let me get this in another translation to make it plain for anybody that doesn't ain't read that scripture before, man. Thinking Esau's gonna get away with his with his with his crimes. New Living Translation, it says, kidnappers must be put to death, whether they are caught in possession of their victims or have already sold them as slaves. I don't understand how anybody can say Esau's gonna get away from his judgment, man. The Lord is not a a, 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 a false. He, he's not a, a, a power of, of, of a false balance, man. Good news translation. It says, "Whoever kidnaps someone, either it uh, either to sell him or to keep him as a slave, is to be put to death." I don't know how you gonna get around that, man. Even though Esau said, "Well, my, my forefathers didn't have slaves, or they, they they I didn't I didn't have them. They had them, but I didn't have them." You all your forefathers coming back, man. You all the ones that sold us into slavery and kidnapped us, man. So you're going to receive the judgment that your forefather would have received. You're going to receive it for yourself, man. You are your forefather. So there's no way around the judgment that Esau is going to receive, man. This is Isaiah 31. This is Isaiah 31 in verse um, in the King James. I'm getting the King James. It's 31 in verse 5. It says, As birds flying, so will you how about Shem Yahushab hosts defend Jerusalem. So as you see those chariots flying, he's going to defend his people, man. So we have nothing to fear, man, but you how about Shem Yahushab, man. As birds flying, so will you have by Shem Yahushav hosts defend Jerusalem. Defending also, he will deliver it. See that? He will deliver it by those chariots, man. And passing over, he will preserve it. So he was he was he's gonna protect us, man. So all hell is gonna be breaking loose, man. Food, famines, and all everything we've always named during the time of Jacob's trouble, all that's gonna be happening, man. But the elect are going to be protected from on high, man. The powers from on high is going to protect us. And we have nothing to fear, man. And let me read the story in the ancient world. When the Assyrians came against uh, came against Jerusalem, man. Came against the children of Israel, man. This is Second This is Second Kings. Second Kings 19. Let me get this in the NLT, man. It's clear cut. This is Second Ezra, not Second Ezra, Second Kings nineteen, and I'm gonna drop down to verse uh, thirty-two. 
It says, and this is what Yahweh Bashem Yahushua says about the king of Assyria. His armies will not enter Jerusalem. See that? The Lord said his armies will not enter into Jerusalem. Make, he, proclaiming that he's not going to not going to affect the children of Israel, man. He says they will not even shoot an arrow at it. See that? See how the Lord protecting the, the, the children of Israel, man? He says they will not march outside its gates with their shields, nor build banks of earth against against its walls. It says the king will return to his own country by the same road on which he came. He will not enter, he will not enter this city, says Yahweh by Shemel Shah. So they was boasting up to go come against the children of Israel, man. He says, For for my own honor and for the sake of my servant David, I will defend this city and protect it. And we, we are a people as a place as well. You know what I'm saying? The scriptures go into we are people and a place, in other words. Sometimes you can, when the scriptures say, uh, uh, talking about Jerusalem, it's speaking about the people. And sometimes when it's talking about the, the land, it's talking about the land as well. But we know in this time, the Lord is going to defend us here in Babylon the Great, man. So it's speaking of a people, man, that he's going to protect. Just like the Lord said, he's going to preserve us, man. As flying over, he's going to preserve us, man. And that's the protection. Let me continue on. It says, for my own, for my own honor and for my, for my sake, my slack. Let me slow down. It says, "For my own honor and for the sake of my servant David, I will defend this city and protect it." That night, the angel of Yahweh by Shimei Yahushai went out to the Assyrians' camp and killed one hundred eighty-five thousand Assyrian soldiers. See that? So we're gonna have protection from on high, man. We're gonna have protection from on high. It says, when the surviving Assyrians woke up the next morning, they found corpse everywhere. See, we're, we're going to be preserved, man. We're going to be protected. So our fear is in Yahweh by Shem Shai, and our faith is in our power, man. Because as he did in the ancient world, he protected us. He's going to do it in this time as well, man. So you have to believe in the word that we, we bring out through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Shai, man. Because what you see in the heavens are the chariots of the Lord, man. And the Lord is coming back with those chariots. This is Psalm 68 and verse 17. This is in the NLT. Let me get in the King James. Get back over here. It says the chariots of power are 20,000, even thousands of angels. See that? Those, when you see those so-called UFOs in the sky, they're going to cover the, they're gonna, man, they're going to be like, well, the scripture tell you, they are like clouds as well in Psalms 104. But the Lord said these chariots are 20,000, even thousands of angels, man. So they talk about the life they see and the, they see far off in the video. They were saying something about a life. They can see a life far off. No, they can see the angels, man. They can see thousands upon thousands of angels, man. Let the chariots of, Yahweh, uh, the, chariots of, of the Most High Power are 20,000, uh, uh, 20, even thousands of angels. Yahweh by Shem Yahushua is among them. See that? The Lord is going to be among them as in, as, as in Sinai in the holy place. See, the Lord is coming back with those chariots, man. He's coming back with those chariots, man. Thou has ascended on high. Thou has led captivity captive. Thou has received gifts of men. Yea, for the rebellious also that Yahweh by Shem Yahushua might dwell among them. Blessed be Yahweh by Shem Yahushai, who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the power of our salvation. Salah. See, the Lord gives us benefits, man. Even those that uh, your P. Diddy's and your wicked uh, other Israelites, they get benefits as well. But we understand the benefits that we receive, man. We understand them, man. And we turn to the Lord because we do understand our power. Yahweh by Shem Yahushai, man. But the point I wanted to make is the Lord is coming back with those angels, man. Thousands upon thousands of angels the Lord is coming with. And they're going to wreak havoc, man. They're going to wreak havoc on Esau and his kingdom. And that's his, this kingdom is his house. Let me get another story in Kings about the chariots, man. This is 2 Kings 
6. And uh, I'm going to start at verse... Uh, Start at verse 8, it says, Then the king of Assyria, it's like another Syria, then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, in, in such and such a place shall be my camp. And the men of power sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place. For whether the Assyrian whether the Syrians are come down, and the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of power told him and warned him of and saved himself there, not once nor twice. So so basically, Elisha gave word to the king of Israel, I think Hezekiah at the time, gave um, gave warning about the Syrians coming and trying to basically ambush you know, so the, uh, the king of Israel, man, the Israelites. So he get he was given warning to 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 make um, preparations for their for them trying to um, ambush them. Verse eleven it says, therefore the the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for th for this thing, and he called his servant and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? See, he thought he had a, somebody that was um was a snitch or what a, a, a traitor. At the time, he thought he had a traitor on his side that was telling the king of Israel what moves he was making. Verse 12, it says, And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet that is in Israel telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchambers. So the spirit, he had a spiritual powers, man. Elisha could hear what this man was doing even, even in his bedchambers, man. And that's the spiritual powers we're going to receive again now, man, when Esau comes against us, man. The Lord is going to endow the men of the Lord with spiritual powers, man. Verse 13, it says, And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore, sit he, whether, he with us, just like it, it says, Therefore, sit he wither horses and chariots and, and great hosts and a great host. And they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of, of the men of power was risen early and go forth, behold, and host of, a host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. So they went and surrounded the city that Elisha was in. Now check this out. He says, and his servant said unto him, at last, my, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, fear not. So he, this is Elisha talking to his, his uh, servant. He says, fear not. This is what Elisha telling his servant, man. Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And that's beautiful, man. Because that's the spirit that you're going to have to be in, knowing that the angels of the Lord are with us, man. They're surrounding us. They surrounded us, man, for our protection. In Elisha, verse 17, it says, And Elisha prayed and said, Yahweh about Shimei Awashah, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And Yahweh about Shimei Awashah opened his eyes and opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire around about Elisha. See that? He opened his servant's eyes to see that the chariots of the Lord was all around Elisha, man. And Elisha was a man of the Lord, man. It was all around him, man. So he had nothing to fear. That's what he told him. Fear not. And that's what we have to know in our spirit, man. The Lord is with us, man. He's, the angels are our brethren. They're here to protect us, man. They're here to protect us. Verse 18, it says, And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Yahweh by Shemi Shah and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. See, the Lord gave him this um, the power to pray to him, man, in which we have that same power to this day, man. That's the spiritual power that we have. 
But he answered them right away, man. And the Lord is going to answer us right away as well, man. So Elisha prayed to the Lord right away. Boom. I pray they blind, they be, be blind. Smite them with blindness. And it happened, man. Uh, continuing on 18, in 18, he says, I pray thee, uh, I, I pray thee with blindness. And he says, and he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. See that? According to what Elisha prayed for, he smote them with blindness, man. So get in your spirit to know the Lord is going to listen to your prayers, man. He's listening to our prayers now, man. And Elisha said unto them, this is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me and I will bring you to the man whom ye seek. But he led them to Samaria. So basically he led them into an ambush. But he, 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 if you continue reading on in the story, uh, Elisha told uh, the king, the king of Israel not to smite them. But that's, one, that's the point I wanted to get, man, that the, that the Lord opened his eyes to see that the chariots of fire was all about him, man. And see the chariots of fire around about us now, man. They, they're in different realms, the cloak on the clouds and stuff. We can't see them. So the Lord is going to be with his men, man, and the women of the Lord as well, man. You have to understand that, man. We are living in heavy spiritual times, man, and the Lord is on our side. Let's get this real quick. This is 2nd Ezra 16. Let me get to it. This is 2nd Ezra 16, and I'm going to drop down to verse uh, 72. No, 70. 73. It says, this is 2nd Ezra 16 and 73. It says, then shall they be known who are my chosen. See that? You're going to know who the chosen men of the Lord, man. And they shall be tried as gold as gold in the fire. Hear, O ye, ye, my beloved, saith Yahweh by Shem Yahushah. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. See that? The time of Jacob's trouble is at hand, man. And the Lord is going to deliver us from that same time, man. 75, it says, but uh, be ye not afraid. See that? The Lord continues to tell us not to be afraid. Be ye not afraid, nor neither doubt, for Yahweh Hashem Yahweh is your God. See that the Lord is our God, man. Because what? And the God of them that that who who keep my commandments and precepts. See that? That's what we've been we rested on, man. We believe and had faith in His commandments and His precepts. Says Yahweh Hashem Yahweh power. Let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. See that? So. The things we went through, man, we're in this sinful flesh. Don't let these things weigh you down, man. Repent to the Lord and stay on a straight and narrow path, man. Because it's going to lead to our salvation. Let me get this real quick. This is one of my favorite Psalms right here. This is Psalms 91. This is Psalms 91 because you're going to see a lot of people dying in the time we're coming into, man. And this is how this, this is how I was written. This is how it's going to play out, man. This is Psalms 91 and verse 1. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. See, we 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 dwelled in the, in the in the secret place of the Lord, man, which is his, his commandments and his precepts. See that? He says, He that dwelleth in the secret place. And that's where we was dwelling at, man. In the law, statutes, and commandments, and in his scriptures, man. Daily, man, getting lessons, going on the highways and byways. We did the will of the Lord, man. Lord willing, we do it to the very end, man. So you're going to be hid under the shadow of the Most High, man, the Almighty. And that's those chariots, man. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He will say of Yahweh by Shem Yahushua, he is my refuge and my fortress. My power in him will I trust. Surely he will deliver me, so like he will deliver thee from the snails of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence, all his disease, your enemies, man. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. And that's those chariots, man. 
That's those cherries is going to be protecting us from on high, man. Just like it was Elisha, man. He, he had no fear because he knew the Lord was with him, man. He says, his, tru his, his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day. And what fly by day? Those, cherry, those missiles, man. The, the time of Jacob's trouble. The terror is going to be all over, man. The missiles that's going to be shot off, man. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. See that? The Lord is going to protect his elect, man. Only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. See that? That's what, I, that's what we want to see, the judgment of the wicked, man. That's what we want to see, man. That's what we want to see, the judgment of the wicked, man. And make it out of this man's kingdom, man, before it's destroyed. And reach the kingdom of heaven, man, which is prepared for us. And I just want to get the point here. This is a good, this is a good, uh, the redemption, the, the remnant of Zion is really what's going to only be saved out of here, man. I started verse two. It says, this is Isaiah four and verse two. It says, matter of fact, let me, eh, do I want to get this in another translation? No, let's get it in King John. It says, in that day shall the branch of Yahweh by Shemiah shall be beautiful and glorified, glorious, like it, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely. For them that are, that are escaped in of Israel, it says, and it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion, and he that remaineth in Jerusalem, shall be called holy, and that's the elect that makes it out of Babylon the Great. Even every one that is written among the living in Jerusalem, it says, when you howl by Shem Yahushai shall wash away the filth of the daughters of Zion and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. And you how about Shem Yahushai? That's those, <laughs> those uh, plagues going to be coming out of the thermal, the judgment of the time of Jacob's trouble and that, and that burning a spirit is that uh, the, the missiles hidden, man. He says, and you how about Shem Yahushai will create Upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assemblies, a cloud of smoke by day and the shining of flame, flaming fire by night. So we're going to be covered, man. For upon all the glory shall be the, a defense. See that? Let me get this in the, let me get this in the, in the team, man. So we're going to be defended from on high, man. Covered. By the, by the chariots of the Most High. This is um, Isaiah 4, 4 and verse 5, New Living Translation. It says, Then Yahweh Bashem Yahushua will provide shade for Mount Zion and all who assemble there. He will provide a canopy of cloud. What's those clouds, man? It's the chariots, man. During the day and the smoke and the flaming fire at night, covering the glorious land. We know it's going into the kingdom of heaven, but it's going to, you're going to cover us down, man. Just like they covered Elisha. Good news translation, it says, Then over Mount Zion and over all who are gathered there, Yahweh Bashem Yahushua will send a cloud at the daytime and a smoke and a bright flame at night. Just like we was walked out of uh, uh, Egypt, man. That's in Exodus, I think, 21, I want to say. A fire by day, I mean a pillar by day and a fire by night. Same exact thing. It says, then over Mount Zion and over all who are gathered there, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh will send a cloud. See that? He will send a cloud in the daytime and, the, and smoke and a bright flame at night. Power's glory will cover and protect the whole city. So the Lord, Lord is going to protect us down, man. With those chariots of your how about Shem Yahushai, man? So Lord willing, I was edified. I'm in it there. Shalom. Shalom.